Okay, I'm not sure that last section videoed or not, so I'm going to re-say it. Right here, uh, this is a before shot from last spring. Uh, this is unbelievably long. These buttresses, this is buttress coming down here, and there's the sole of the foot. There's so much buttress. It's just crazy. Never seen anything like that. That's just unbelievable. Way out of hand. Obviously never even trimmed by the other farrier. So that's what the horse is walking on. It's walking on the side of the buttress. And then this periopal is so thick. So thick. Because it's trying to hold the capsule onto the leg. So it has to grow thick and heavy like that to keep everything as it's slipping off the leg. The foot itself is actually slipping off the leg. So the periopal is like, hey, I got to hold this all together. So that's what was going on there. Once again, here I see a buttress that's uh, way too long, I'm guessing. Um, that's before shot as well, or it might be right after the first trim. I'm not sure. But this buttress here looks pretty long from here to here. It probably should be back to about here in length. So we're going to see what you've done since then. Okay, there's her lovely horse today. So let's take a look at where the feet have gone. You saw the duck footed foot and now we've got no duck foot left, but we still have slanty back heels. So we've got to fix that and get that to open up because right now you've got some bound feet going on there. So we want to make sure that that doesn't stay that way or you're going to get this problem here. I drew some drawings to show you. So here's what you want, inner foot, outer foot, right? And when you bring the toe back, which you've been doing, but you keep the back from expanding backward or it keeps curled under, then you get this. The inner foot has no place to go but up and get smushed. And that's what's happening to one of your back feet. So there's the drawing. The front part has to come up and back to here, which you did. You've been moving that line really well. See that stress point where the foot should be is where she had a stress point on her horse's foot before, right? So this is coming up and back, or and this is not moving. We have to get this to open up and come back right here. If we don't, then what do we get inside? Look at this smaller capsule. The whole inner foot has to now fit into this much space instead of that much space. So this is what's going on right now with your horse's foot. So we have to learn more about the back of the foot so that you can understand what you got going. And right here, um, I also see a very bound up foot right here with this back left foot. I don't know what it was like when you got him, but you know, the former farrier probably did that too. So let's get that fixed. That's causing the angle of the fetlock to be too straight up and down. The more bound they get in the back. I have seen this happen in my friend's horse as well. Karen, the gal that did the initial post on this thread. It was actually her horse with the hole in the foot. She's got really bad uh, bound up feet and the two back feet. We've been working on them for three months now and two months. Yeah, two months. And they're already looking way better. So I'll show you some before and after pictures of that as well. So here is a current picture of one of your horse's front feet. And you can see the buttresses were too long initially because they're really slanting forward exactly like the horse that um, I've been helping Karen with and all her horses. So they're walking on the side of the buttress. This line, this line should end here, not way out here. So when you get this convergence of lines happening, where the front lines are straightening up and the back lines aren't, you're moving your horse into a bound up foot position and the inside is being smushed right here is a bulge because the inner foot has no place to go but out. You have to be really careful of this area of the foot when you're trimming, when you have this issue going on. We have to make sure that we allow this foot to have somewhere to go to come back. And right now when it's trying to come back, it's going to hit a blockade right here and it's going to stop because there's too much hoof right there and it won't be able to come back. So you want to bevel a lot underneath here and be real cognizant about not leaving anything too long there. And you do that from underneath the foot. And an indication of this is you can see, well, I'll show you in a second, but this um, 
real thick periopal that happens right in the back right there. That's because it's trying to hold this back of the capsule onto the leg. I drew some lines to show you what I'm seeing. So that curled underfoot, it's very curled under and the horse is walking on the side of the back of the foot. And so we want to get it to come more to that like this. So all this has to get shorter and straighter. So you have to keep filing the bottom so it'll start stop growing too long. And then as that happens, it'll start coming down straight. So you have to grow a straighter foot. This isn't, this will move back though. It will move back, but you can't just file it and then this will just expand and come back. You have to kind of do it as it's growing at the same time and help everything to move as a system. Okay. So how do we do that? Let's start from the underside of the foot and the back of the foot. You have done a great job already of carving out your frog. I can see you've been doing everything that TACT has been teaching you. Been doing so good, Whitney. Now let's take you to the next level of knowledge. Here's one indication I learned from my mare. If you have a bound up foot, you're going to have short, stubby little, uh, little um, bars. That's exactly what my horse had. They're only about half the length of the frog and then they drop off. And so they go about an inch, you know, like only an inch in from the end of the buttress, maybe inch and a half. That's exactly what your horse is doing here. Also, you got some flaps going. So you can't see it in this photo in the video, but um, maybe she can post this picture. I can post this picture live on the thread. Um, right here, you've got a flap of, of bar that was laid over the sole because nobody trimmed it and it got melted in with your sole. So you'll find if you start carving from this side and you kind of come back, you're going to carve off this excess flap and reveal the real true bar is underneath there, wanting to just be straight. But once again, the, the former farrier left the whole back of the foot untouched and everything just got hugely too long. And you've been doing a good job of trying to get that back. I mean, what a difference already with these buttresses. But now, since they were run forward because they were too long, when you start filing off the top, where are they going to start from? They're going to start from like a half inch too far forward on the foot because they were slanted. They were slanted down and forward. So we have to encourage it to stand up and come back, right? So what I do is, what I learned to do from Linda is this part right here, you have to really carve out the seed of the corn and encourage it to be further back. So um, I bring the bar, I carve the bar down to the length, to the level of the sole. I don't leave any extra bar right here when I'm trying to get the foot to come back. And then right in here where it's grabbing onto the buttress in the wrong spot, you want this to be grabbing to a buttress back here, not way over here. So we release the side of it so it can move. This whole thing's not going to want to move. If you separate these two parts a little bit, then they'll want to move better. The bar can come over here better. So you just keep encouraging that by taking a little bit more out right here. And um, I was scared to do that at first too. I didn't know how much it should be taking out right here. And I find if I carve it pretty well and think of releasing this so it can move, it um, does move and it's uh, been much very beneficial for my horse. When I started working on her bars and her compacted sole around here, that's when she got sound again. I worked on everything else for a month and was scared, didn't know what I was doing with this area. But now I do. And as soon as I got brave and started seeing she had flaps of bar tissue here, I didn't notice either until the snow came and it cleaned off her foot super pristinely clean. And I went, oh my God, she's got these flaps. I didn't even see them. So I started taking that down and bam, new horse. Because what happens is all this excess tissue gets uh, pushing up into the laminae bar or the soft bar inside the inner foot and that causes a lot of pain so but your horse isn't lame so that's great you don't have those issues okay but it will be if you keep binding up the foot it's going to get lame next like mine did so we don't want that to happen to yours periopal skin here this line of periopal not only the frog but your periopal line i know you've taken a lot off that because that was absolutely prolific but let's do a little bit more right in here I think you should take a little bit more off so that the bottom of this buttress is free to move this way. Okay. So look for anything binding it from coming this way. 
Same thing there. A little bit too much there. Take that down a little bit with your knife or however you want to do it. And that should come back. So that should make a big difference. And then over here as well, you've got this periopal skin here, that periopal skin there. And then you're still slanting forward on those heels, right? They want to curve and go forward. This is so common. My gelding does this and I have to be on those heels on a constant basis. So what do I do? I'll show you over. Let's see, let's find a better picture for that. But first let's look at this picture. This is a before shot again, or maybe after her first trim, um, with tact and, um, look at those prolific bars. So look how much that, and look how much this area, she's improved this area so much since springtime. How wonderful is that? So you, you've cut out a lot of this and filed that because you filed it to the two inch. When you do that, you get rid of a lot of that, right? But you see, you've got this excess bar or this excess buttress curling over there and it's holding this there and it's holding everything forward. So we want to keep releasing this area so that it can come back. So the two things I do is I file this spot and just give them a nice flat landing pad on a constant basis. I just touch that up with my file, flatten that down, flatten that down and bevel my toe. Because if you leave leverage on the toe, it's not going to work back here. So, but I don't, I don't try to take a lot back. I try to just bevel it and keep it at the one and a half inch. But then, you know, that's how I bound up my horse. So now I know, I didn't know these things that you're going to know now that won't bind up the back. So I did that and did that and thought, oh, this is great. He's straightening up, right? He's straightening up. Guess what? He, he went lame too on the front right at the end of a trail ride trip last fall. And I know it was because I bound him up over the summer and I didn't know it. He was bound up right through here because I was doing too good of a job of doing this, this, and this without doing enough here and here. Okay. So it's really, 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 really important. All this stuff back here that Linda's been discovering in the last year and a half has been humongous information for all of us. So. Make sure you keep this flat, a nice flat, because look what happens if it's not flat. It wants to curl and go forward. And then that just, the, the heels just stay right where they were. So when you do, when you file this off nice and flat, it keeps it back. And you'll know if you look at a horse sideways, what happens when you're doing the heel. It sits at an angle, right? So if it's shorter, what's going to happen? It's going to be further back on the foot. If it's longer, it's going to be further forward. So shorter also brings the heel back. But I'm not talking lots of shortness. I'm talking just keeping that roundedness off right in this area. You're going to catch it and you're going to file it. Nope, I'm making a nice flat landing pad for you, bud. So you can do that daily if you wanted to. I mean, I mean, I don't, but I mean, I do sometimes if I'm really working on fixing something, I might check on them every day. Okay, now let's just uh, look at the back part of the periopal and then we'll be done. Okay, here's a very current soul shot. Wow. I mean, what a difference you have made in the back of that foot. I see the only thing I would say is, I mean, cause look at these, look how straight they look now. Really nice and straight compared to when they were curled forward before. So you're doing really good here, but, um, I would take this off right in here because I think this periopal is forcing this forward. And you want this to be able to open up and come back. So I would take off that periopal and I would take off that periopal right there. And that might make a huge difference for you. Just doing that might make a humongous difference. And then, like I said, just keeping this a nice flat landing pad. And like, see, I see it goes up right there a little bit. So um, you don't want it like that because that's going to not enable them to walk on the back of the foot like they should be. So make sure that you're filing this flat from the quarters back to the heels. And this is your tallest part. If this is taller than this, then you want to get rid of that height right there because you want them to have a nice back solid foundation of a heel because that's going to keep the heel from running forward and bending under. If they're not walking good enough on this, this is in the way. This is stopping everything from coming back. There's a little bit of a blockade right there. So file that down to match this. So you just got to understand what your heels are doing there and that should help you. I also want to look at that one back left foot on your horse and show you some pictures of a horse I'm working on that is super, super bound up in the back 
and then we'll be done. But wait, let's look at this picture. I forgot you had this one. Okay. So bars, you can see the flap really well in this picture. There it is. There's your flappy tissue. And that's actually excess bar. You should have a straight little line right here going from here to here. And it's under there somewhere, but this, it's not going to be there until you take this flap of skin. So flap of hard sole tissue. So you have to start from this side and just keep carving it, carving it, carving it, carving it back to about where it should be. And then it'll start growing there. Okay. That's huge. Cause this right alone can keep your heels bound up and keep them curled. Then this seat of the corn right there, make sure that you release that, you know, by taking your knife and carving that away a little bit so that everything can move where it should move. And then this side, you want to define this better too, because I really don't know what's going on here. I see this. I don't really know. That's definitely not bar. So I think you're doing some carving on your sole and taking out some excess sole with your knife. So, but the bars here, like this line going down right here and stuff and all this, it's kind of like not really defined. And you want to tell the foot, hey foot, I want you to, you know, be a nice foundation for the back of my horse. So this bar, I think this is the bar coming here. You're going to want to clean this out right in here and make sure your bars are very well defined. Okay. So clean up your seat of the corns on both sides. Take that excess bar tissue out there. And I don't know what you're going on there. So map your bars top of the buttress to the apex of the frog, see what's going on and where they, where they should be. And always carve from the outside in to guide them back. We don't carve any of this stuff out down here, but when you're taking out a flap, it's kind of scary. You're like, how far do I keep going this way? You'll kind of see there's a line. You'll see the line of the sole where the bar actually is after you uncover this. So just go a little bit out of time on that. And then right here, look for anything here that is keeping those buttresses this way. So once again, be kind of aggressive with any of this. Looks like you have taken a lot out, but double check right here at the base of your buttresses because you have real curled under feet. So I want to make sure that we really give them a chance to be able to move freely. And then of course you could try keeping them soft too. And um, using that cream that Linda loves so much, putting a plastic bag over their foot for the day um, with some duct tape and a sock, et cetera, et cetera. There's tricks you can do. I'm going to actually try bacon fat on my horse because my horse is very active and I'm afraid she's going to slip if I make a temporary boot for her or to duct tape. So my friend said, let's try some bacon grease because it, makes a film and it'll kind of get hard on the outside and it should stay on the foot, even though she's turned out 24 seven. So the next thing I'm going to do for her is rub a whole bunch of bacon grease. I fried up two pounds of bacon in the oven and saved all the grease. And I'm going to rub it all right in here and right in here, right in here, and try to keep all this soft and moist so it can move around better. Uh, Linda says, if this is rock hard, it's not going to move. And I have found that to be true with my mare. So that helps too. Moisture, moisture, and more moisture. Okay. I'm finding a few more things. All right. So I was looking for the other picture and then I come across some more pictures. So right here, you're leaving that too long. Well, you did in this picture anyway. So and that's exactly what I had saw, seen from the under picture too, as well. You've got your buttress right here and then you've got it too long right here. So what's going to happen? Is this going to be able to move back? No, because it's going to hit the ground. It's going to be stopped because it's hitting the ground. So you have to lift this leverage off. Look for the leverage spots in your foot. Where's the leverage happening? Right here. That's where that foot is slightly bound up because this is going too straight and this is bulging out right in here. This is a very pretty much getting to be a bound foot right here. So hmm, I don't know what you're doing with your toes, but... I want to make sure that you're not taking off too much right in here to make that angle be too straight. Um, when the foot binds up, it can maybe, I don't know. I'm not sure about this front angle being straight like that. Let's, we can discuss it further after the video if you need to. So right here though, I see a bulging spot and that's exactly what's happening is the back 
is meeting the front. Your front is back enough, plenty, maybe too much. So back off on the toe a little bit and let's get concentrating on this back end coming back. From here back is where you got it. See that right there from here back. We have to get that to come back. And that's why you asked me to do the video. So you definitely take off your underneath here and then do those other things I said in the back of that sole that we just covered. That should make a big difference over time. And if that doesn't, then you got to keep it soft too on top of that. Okay, here's that bound up foot in the back left that I am mostly concerned with. And so right there, where's your stress point? Right there. The foot is being compacted forward right here. So you're getting a bulge happening right there, right there. So you got to get this to come up and back. So what are we going to do? You're going to take off this underneath here because that's holding everything from moving back. You have to be really good about keeping leverage off of there. And so that means beveling it. That means watching it constantly, uh, checking up on it like every week at the most to make sure as it's moving back that you're keeping it short. As it's moving back, you keep it short again. Otherwise, it'll just stay there till the next trim. And then it'll start growing too long again, and then it'll start going back forward again. So you have to be very, very diligent about that right there so that doesn't do that. And that will open it up. All the principles I just said about the other feet apply to this one even more so than anything else. Okay, here is a foot that we've been working with with Karen's horse. The former farrier didn't have any idea what to do with this foot. He never touched it except for a couple times a year. He filed the bottom of the foot off. That's it. We showed it to three professional farriers. So the farrier that was taking care of her and then two other professional farriers, one with 40 years of experience and said what to do with this foot. And the one with 40 years of experience said, I don't know what I would do with that foot. He had no clue what to do with it. You know why? Because nobody knows what a bound foot is, but Linda. Nobody knows about the inner foot properly, but Linda. So I looked at this foot. I'm like, whoa, this is bad. We've got a hooked toe. I mean, it is so bound. It is so bound up that it's hooked at the toe. So these lines are just horrendous right here. Poor thing. So the first thing you got to do is what? Where's your leverage points? Where's your points that are stopping the foot from coming back? Right there. That's stopping the foot from coming back. So you got to take that leverage off so the foot can expand backwards, right? So it's right like right now it's like this and we want it to be able to come back like that. And when it comes back like that, if it's got excess foot here, it's going to go so far and it's going to go, oh, I'm stuck. I can't move from there. So you, then you have to file a little bit off right here so it can go, oh, thank you. I can move back again. And then it hits. They said, <laughs> I just got the download in my head. It's like planing off the bottom of a door. You're trying to shut your door and then your door hits the ground and you have to plane it off a little bit more. Or in the wintertime when you get snow underneath something and you're trying to open or close a gate. That's exactly what the foot's doing. So here is a little bit down the road. I don't know if this is a week or two. I mean, very quickly she started unbinding. If you can see the difference in these lines from this side to that side. A huge difference. This is what your back foot is going to do on your horse and all your feet, but this is a very severe case. I'll show you the one with the lines on it now that I drew. And this is why I say your uh, fetlock is going to also become a better angle. So this curves down in the front on this foot, right? And it's already at the top of the foot. It's already straight to the foot. It's not domed over to the foot nearly as much as this, because as this comes up, this changes the whole angle of this part of the foot and these part of the bones. It's like wearing high heeled shoes or shoes that are low in the back and high in the toe. They call them earth shoes. When I was growing up as a kid, they were purposely low in the back. So it's like that. You're changing so many things on the foot, but notice how much better those lines are right there. How much less curved they are than this one. Marked differences. And all I did was apply tact. 
look for the leverage points, like right here on this foot, I'd go back and take that off right there, just a little bit off right there, which I think I did after I took the picture. So that's why you want to have them on a really hard surface so you can really see that bottom and see, see there's a little bulge, there's a leverage point underneath that. And I had to relieve those. And this horse wouldn't even pick up her back feet very well. Um, she alternates each foot about 30 seconds per foot. So I have to jump back and forth between both back feet and I have to trim them with her just tipping up her toes. And so it's been a long road, but now she's getting much better. So hopefully that helps. I didn't say anything that Linda doesn't say, but um, hopefully sometimes hearing someone else say something or, you know, something can make a light bulb go off in your head. And also Linda doesn't have to tell everybody everything because she's way too busy. So I'm happy to help out with the knowledge that I have. And hopefully this will really help you have a great summer coming up with your horse.